Sunday. All right. Today's lesson is a lesson called Jesus Showed His Glory. Now, what do you think that could possibly mean? What do you think? Go get a paper towel. Quickly. I found some. What do you think that could possibly mean, Jesus shows glory? What do you think? Shows how great he is. Any other ideas? Jesus showed his glory? Any ideas? Kaya, what do you think? Again. Shows how compassionate he is. Shows how compassionate he is. Alright, now. If you remember from we've already covered some of the miracles that Jesus did. He fed 5,000 men with just five loaves of bread and two fish. He walked on the water, and if that wasn't cool enough, then he called Peter, one of his disciples, and said, hey, come on out with me. Now, this time, he went up to a mountain to pray, and he only took two of his disciples with him. Or, I'm sorry, three of his disciples with him. He had, how many disciples did he have? Two. Twelve. Twelve. I hear twelve over here. Yeah, there's twelve. Okay, Matthias is going to agree. He had 12 disciples. 12 disciples, but there were three that were called his inner circle. There were three that he was especially close to. One was named Peter, one was named James, and one was named John. Now, James and John were brothers, and then Peter was, a, Peter was another guy. These three were the three that were the closest to Jesus. And so when he went up to heaven, or to heaven, when he went up to the mountain to pray, he said, I'm, I'm just going to take these three with me. He took his three closest disciples with him. When he went up to the mountain, let me, let me read here. Who has a Bible this morning that wants to read? Put your hand up if you got a Bible and you want to read. We're, we're in Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Verses 28 through 36. So Luke chapter 9. Was there anybody that wanted to read? I'm about to tell you. Now, it came to pass about eight days after these things. This was, this was a, a lesson that he had done. He took Peter, John, and James and went up to the mount to pray. Girls. I'm teaching unless you're uh, answering questions you shouldn't be talking because you're distracting and guys I'll tell you guys the same thing unless you're answering questions you need not be talking because then you're only distracting he did but here's another way and as he prayed the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening who knows what glistening means shiny alright and behold, two men talked with him, who were Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem, as it died on the cross. So here he is, he's, just, he's gone up to the mountain to pray, and all of a sudden, his clothes begin to get real bright and shiny. Okay, again, during the lesson, unless you're answering... So his clothes begin to get real bright and shiny. And all of a sudden, Elijah and Moses appear. And they are talking to him. Now, Moses lived about, mm, let's see, about 1,400 years before Jesus. Moses lived about 1,400 years before Jesus. So he was there before Jesus. And Moses had died. But Moses came back. And was seen with Jesus. He came back from the dead, yeah. Just just in this time though. Now, Elijah, Elijah lived maybe about, oh, ba, 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 let's see. Maybe about 800 years before Jesus. Oh, wow. And Elijah never died. Elijah never died. God took Elijah up into heaven in a chariot of fire alive. So Elijah never died. And these two appeared and spoke with and they were speaking with Jesus. 
And they were speaking about his death that was about to happen in Jerusalem. But Peter and those who were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Then it happened as they were parting from him that Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles. In, in other words, three, uh, three houses of worship. One for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses, not realizing what he said. And when he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were fearful as they entered into the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved son, hear him. When the voice had ceased, Jesus was found alone. But they kept quiet and told no one in those days any of the things that they had seen. So here are two, two old-time prophets that appear with Jesus. And... They're speaking to him about the death that he is about to die that is being hung on the cross. And Peter's like, wow, Jesus, it's good for us to be here. Let's make three tabernacles. Now, why do you think that's a problem? Why, do you, why does anybody think that's a problem that they make three tabernacles? Now, now you know, do, do you guys know people that they're the first to speak out you know, they're, they're the first to volunteer for everything, and sometimes their bodies get in motion and their mouths get in motion before their brains do. You know people like that? You know, let's no, no. not talk about people in specific. I know who you're talking about. That Hopefully they don't, but there are a lot of people, their mouths get going before their brains get going, and Peter was one of those people. Peter's mouth was always going. Peter was always jumping in and volunteering for things. He, he was the one that said, Hey, Jesus, if that's you coming in, if that's you uh, walking to us on the water, tell me to get out of the boat. Alright, if I am in a boat, I am not going to ask somebody to tell me to get out of the boat and walk on water. I don't have that kind of faith, okay? I don't. Honestly, I don't. But Peter's that kind of guy. Peter's the kind of guy, I don't care about the consequences, let's do it. I'm a little more, mm, let me think about that for a second. So there's Peter. Hey, Jesus, you know, this is a good place to be. Let's make three tabernacles. Here's the problem. We only worship one God. We only worship one God. We don't worship three gods. We don't worship Jesus and Elijah and Moses. We don't worship men. We don't worship women. We don't worship people. We worship God. And only God deserves our worship. So that's a problem right there. I don't know what Peter was thinking when he said that. I don't think Peter was thinking. I think he was afraid. Another, another scripture, one of the other references said that Peter was afraid and he didn't know what to say. Now, let me tell you this. If you're afraid and you don't know what to say, the smart thing is don't say anything, right? Yeah? But not Peter. Hey, let's build three tabernacles. No, Peter, let's not do that. But here's another thing. Now, some of you guys have just come back from camp. Great time, wasn't it? Yeah. Great time, right? It's tempting when you have a great time in the Lord like that to say, you know what? Let's keep living that. Let's keep living it over and over again. Let's keep living it over. I want to do this again. I want to do this again. I want to do this again. God doesn't work like that. God doesn't work like that. You know, we all think, oh, good times. Let's do it again. But God says, I want you to keep moving. I want you to keep moving on. Yes, camp was a great time. But God's got more for you. You guys that didn't go to camp, God's got more for you. Now, I know you you come to the children's church, and I I give you guys a smash-bang lesson, and you guys come out of here and go, ooh, what a good time that was. Ooh, what a good time. Let's do that again. Here's the thing. God's got something better for you. He doesn't want us to just sit in one place. It's tempting that when we see the glory of God, and that's what they saw. They saw the glory of God when Jesus 
when his clothes all lit up and everything. That was the glory of God. And it's tempting to say, let's stay here. This is good. And God says, no. I want you to move on because I got something better for you. Who just came out of a school year that you just loved school? You loved your teacher. You loved the classes. You just loved it all. Raina, what grade did you just come out of? Second grade. Second grade. What grade did you come out of, Taylor? Sixth. What grade did you come out of, Faber? Four. Okay, so two, four, six. Awesome. Oh, my. Let's. Nine. So how about if Raina says, hey, I like second grade so much, I, I don't want to go to third grade. I want to stay in second grade. Two. And Faber says, hey, I like fourth grade so much, I'm going to stay in fourth grade. I'm not gonna, I am not. don't want to go to fifth grade. I just want to stay in fourth. And Taylor's going. Taylor's going. <laughs> Taylor's going, I like sixth grade. Let's say Matthias. You didn't like sixth grade, did you? No, no, no. He can't wait to get to seventh grade. Oh. No. Oh, no. no. Please. No. no ta Taylor's going, I like sixth grade so much, I can't wait to get. I like fifth grade so much. You like fifth grade? Oh, I want to stay in fifth grade forever. Yes. It's harder than first grade. Here's the thing, though. You can't. You can't. Trust me. The second time around, second grade would be no fun. It is fun. It was fun the first time around, but I would guarantee you the second time around it won't be. Because God's got something better for you. 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 Look, when you're in church, you're going to get into services that are just awesome. And you say, I want to, I want to do that forever. But God's got something better better for you. Now, maybe you don't like where you are right now. God's got something better for you. Maybe you do like something. Maybe you do like where you are right now. God's got something better for you. Maybe you're thinking, you know, this is really awesome. God has something better for you. Now, I want you to just remember that. No matter where you are, better things are coming. If you follow God. Now, if you walk away from God, I can't give you any guarantees. Things are not going to go well. But if you stick with God, God has got something better for you. I'm, I'm just thinking right now about my niece. And she was over in China. Preaching the gospel. You know what preaching the gospel is in China? It's illegal. It's illegal. Even now. To this day, if you go over to China preaching the gospel, you might get yourself thrown in jail. And so, COVID came around, and she got it. And now she's got to leave China, and she couldn't get back in. So what's going on? Now she's in Mongolia, preaching the gospel. That's a country right next to China. And guess what? It's illegal there, too. Because communism, these countries are communist countries, and communism does not like the gospel. It is illegal to preach the gospel in a communist country. Because they want to be God. They want to say, look at me, I'm going to do everything for you. God, you don't need God. But they're wrong. They're wrong. Our country is blessed because we follow God. Our country is not being blessed very much anymore because we stopped following God. We need to follow God again. And God's going to bless us. As long as we follow God, God's got something better for us. And listen, even though the country may not be following God, I guarantee you favor. I guarantee you Anaya. I guarantee you Taylor. I guarantee you Noel. I guarantee you Noel. I guarantee you Harmony. I guarantee you Xander. I guarantee you Kaya. I guarantee you Kaylee. I guarantee you Eternity. I'm uh, sorry, Serenity. I guarantee you Greg. I guarantee you Anais. I guarantee you Savannah, I guarantee you Oriana Faith, I guarantee you uh, Roman, Roman, I guarantee you Dominic, I guarantee you Reina, I guarantee you Tavion, I guarantee you Josiah, I guarantee you Matthias, I guarantee you Nathaniel.
if, 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 if you follow God, God has something better for you. God's got something good for you. God's going to lead you into adventures like you never know. Can I, can I tell you? Oh, by the way, uh, Aria, God's got something good for you. One of the best things that I ever did was back in 2008, I got to take a trip down to Honduras. And we went over into Nicaragua. Now, we weren't supposed to be in Nicaragua because we didn't have a visa to go there, but we went there anyway. And we preached the gospel in Nicaragua. That was the most awesome trip of my life. And I could say, gee, I wish I could do that again. But God's got something better for me. God's got something more awesome for me. If I keep following him, now that's my shut up alarm. It's time to shut up. Everybody say shut up, Dave. Shut, shut up, Dave. That, you're not supposed to tell me to shut up. Yes. You, Especially you told grown up. You you to to shut up. Hey, if I told you to jump to off a bridge, would you I do it? Yeah. 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 Right. That is the only time I'm going to let you tell me that. All right. I want you. To, I want to leave you guys with this. If you heard nothing else, I want you to know this. If you follow God, He's got something good for you. But when God leads you into something good, don't just decide you're going to stay there. Don't plant. A, you know. Don't pitch a tent there and say, "Hey, I'm going to camp out right here. This was good." God's got something better for you. Even if it's the greatest thing. Camp was a great thing, wasn't it, girls? Yes. Camp was awesome, wasn't it? It was awesome. I seen that picture of you. Ah, and you were just and I seen that picture of you. And I seen that picture of you. I seen that picture of you too. They're they're on the church's website. They're on the all, of, all four of these girls are on the Arizona Church of God's website on, the, uh, on their Facebook page from the time of camp. But God, 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 God has something better. Are you on faith? God has something better for you. God has something better for you. Say it with me. God has something better for you. Say it. God has something better for me. God has something better for me. Bow your heads. Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this lesson. You have showed us your glory. And we've tasted of the good things that you have, Lord. But no matter how good they are, we know that we can't just stay there. Because you want to lead us to something even better. You want to lead us to something even better. You want to lead us to something even better. And I pray, Lord, that we would remain faithful to you. That we might seek out you. That we might seek your presence. That we might seek to do your will. That you would lead us into something better. And in all things we give you praise. In all things we give you honor. In all things we give you glory. In Jesus' name.